Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna draw the super beautiful floral patterns with markers and these are super fun and satisfying designs that you can do to decorate your walls, your journals or even to turn it into merch and products for you to sell. All you're gonna need for this tutorial is some drawing paper, pencil and eraser and something to color your florals with. All right, so to start I'm gonna play with some colors to choose a color scheme and if you don't know much about colors, an easy way to have a very beautiful and harmonic color scheme is to use different tones of the same color so like let's say you're using red use like different tones of red maybe some oranges some yellows you're basically gonna focus on the analogous colors which are the colors that are side by side on the color wheel of course you don't have to do this but this is a way that always works for me so it's a good tip if you're just starting out with colors in my case I'm starting with a color scheme that I'm really digging right now which are these like earthy tones some beiges um, some light browns and this like caramel caramel like color. I also really like this deep burgundy color and here I'm just putting them on paper to see what I like or not. Of course I'm not using my drawing paper yet, I'm just using some printer cheap paper. I'm not really using all of these colors but I'm trying to find five or six colors for an illustration and I think these colors right here will look nice. I'm also gonna try out a few other colors here to come up with a second color combination and I think these ones will look super cool. Now moving on to our drawing paper, to create a pattern you really need your drawing to be repetitive. So you're not just filling up a page with doodles, you want to draw some flowers and leaves and then repeat them in a similar position in all directions. So just picture an imaginary grid on your paper and choose a square to start with. You're basically gonna fill the square with florals that come up to your mind and remember to play with different sizes, shapes or leaves to make it look really cool. Play with like different types of flowers, different types of leaves, different thickness of stems and just remember that this is not supposed to be a seamless perfect pattern because we're doing this by hand. So embrace the imperfections, okay? Just keep drawing and once you filled your imaginary square with florals, you can start repeating your doodles, trying to recreate this square again and again on your page. Of course you're doing this by eye, so if you are a perfectionist, feel free to actually draw a grid. You can also use a ruler to do this and you can make this really perfect if you want to. But I personally like doing it by eye and use my free hand to draw this stuff. So I just know this won't be perfect and I kind of like that. Again, all you have to do is repeat the patterns as if you're like copy pasting the imaginary square of doodles everywhere else on your page. Sometimes it's hard because we'll end up with some bigger empty spaces. So again, since this is not perfect, we can adjust our doodles to occupy those spaces better. All right, so now that the page is filled, I'm going to erase the pencil marks a bit so they don't show through the markers. And now comes the fun part. Finally, we can start painting. And again, we are repeating the colors to create this pattern. So each doodle that repeats itself will have the same colors, basically. This kind of feels like a coloring book and it's so satisfying. Satisfying. I personally like to add the base colors first and then add some extra layers of the same color to create a little bit of depth and shadow which I really think brings our florals to another level. So basically I add the main color and then I wait for it to dry a little bit and then I come back with the same color now painting the insides of the flower or the shadow parts. So as you can see here I'm adding the second layer now and it makes the color a little darker and more intense so it's a nice way to make your florals a little more complex without having to use another color or another marker. Here I'm basically replicating the same color for each of these flowers and now I'm doing the same thing with this stem with leaves. I find it more fun to do one element at a time and then replicate them but you can draw in any order that you prefer. It's really cool to see that when we start adding the colors it starts looking like a pattern and you get that pattern feel to your illustration. So yeah, this part is really fun. And in the end, you can also add some random details in the empty spaces just to fill up the spaces and make everything feel more connected. You can add some dashes, some dots, circles, lines, or like really anything you want, like little stars, hearts, anything works. 
I'm drawing this tiny leaf shapes just to stay on theme and I don't exactly love it but anyway this was the idea I had and this was our first illustration so far now we're gonna try a little bit different by drawing everything in a smaller scale just to play with the grid a little bit and this time I'm actually drawing the grid because I want to see more repetition to really give that endless pattern feel to the drawing and since we're drawing everything smaller this time we can draw even simpler simpler doodles. So again, I'm doing this by eye. I'm not using a ruler. You can totally use a ruler if it makes it easier for you. You draw your grid and you choose one square to start with and then you start doodling in it. Here, I'm just gonna start playing with some different shapes of leaves and stems and just sketch a little bit until I feel confident to paint. I'm not gonna sketch the whole page, just enough until I feel like I understand the pattern. Now that I'm feeling more confident with this pattern, I basically understood where to draw each element. I'm going to erase the pencil marks a little bit and start painting. And especially the painting part is basically a game of repetition, which can be boring if you let it be boring. or it could be meditative if you let it be meditative. So yeah, you can create the experience you want when creating these illustrations. I personally always have like a podcast or a show in the background because it really helps me focus. Find what works for you because this really is kind of a patience thing. If you get anxious or tired, you're going to start making mistakes or just start drawing in a more like lazy way. It happens to me all the time and you won't like the results. So this is an actual factor when it comes to drawing by hand. As you can see here, I started by coloring the initial square with doodles and now I'm gonna replicate this design. I'm starting with this flower, so I'm basically painting this flower again and again and then all the other florals following my initial sketch that you probably can't see on camera, but I can still see a little bit. So yeah, you basically follow your pencil marks that you still have on paper and once you are feeling more confident with the design, you won't even need the pencil marks. You can just repeat the pattern with the markers. And this is our second pattern. Now we're moving on to a third pattern that we're going to do a little bit different this time. Instead of having each doodle not touch each other like we were doing before, we are interlacing everything together and it will be even more imperfect, which means it will look more like nature in real life. We're not trying to do anything like realistic, we're just trying to create more natural movements this time. So I'm gonna go back to a bigger grid like we did in the first one and drawing each element a little larger so I can add more movement and more details to each floral and this time I'm only gonna have one flower and these long stems with leaves in each square so the rule in my head basically is flower to the left leaves to the right and I'm gonna try to interlace everything and not draw them exactly alike just position them in the right places but I'm not gonna worry too much about making each flower look the same or each leaf look the same because I actually don't want that I want each thing to look more natural in the end it's gonna look very different than the other ones you're gonna see these flowers are super easy to draw it's basically petals coming out of a stem and I really like to play the movement of the petals so I like fold them and just basically drawing them in ways that you can see inside and outside of them. I think it's really cool when we can portray this more natural aspects of the flowers in our drawings. And I'm gonna do the same with the leaves. So I basically just roughly sketched their positions on paper, but now as I paint, I'm gonna really be careful with their shapes and try to add as much movement as possible. Here I'm painting this flower and as we did on the other patterns, I'm going to replicate these flowers following my sketch marks but now with the markers and I'm going to replicate the same color for each flower. Okay. 
I'm also going to do the same thing with the stems with leaves. I'm going to draw them all just like I sketched, but a little bit more detailed. And I'm going to be more relaxed and draw each leaf in its own way. I'm not trying to make them all look the same. I'm really trying to make them look more natural. And yeah, I'm going to try to connect all the stems together and all the flowers together to make it seem a little bit more flowy and natural. At first, I'm just working with two colors here. So just adding the base colors and then we're gonna make the drawing pop by adding more colors later. As you can see, these are very simple leaves. You could actually draw them all in the same shape and position or you can do like me and make them more dynamic by drawing them in different positions. If you have a hard time doing this and picturing different positions, you can use references. Like you can use a plant you have at home and play with their leaves to see the different positions. Or you can also just cut a piece of paper in the shape of a leaf and play with it until you have a better idea of different positions you can draw. References help a lot guys and there's no shame in looking for inspiration out there, okay? This is how you improve your skill and your style. And now that we have our base colors in, I'm gonna use this orange tone to create a separation between the leaves. So you can paint some random leaves in different colors or like when a leaf is folded or bent, one side of the leaf could have a different color. And here I'm basically painting a different color when we have two or more leaves on top of each other to create depth and a little bit of contrast. same with the flowers now painting one side of the petals with the same pink that I was already working with to create some depth and make the flowers pop a little bit from the paper and there's not much of a rule here I I'm honestly even confused with the petals I drew to be honest I'm they kind of became one big blob of pink but in theory I'm trying to paint the insides of the petals darker I'm I'm just kind of improvising here just creating some separation between the petals nothing too complicated I'm not trying to make it perfect or realistic or anything like that. In the end, this is the cool thing about drawing patterns is that the repetition effect makes it look cool even if things are imperfect, you know? Also, I did find that there are quite a lot of empty spaces in the end, so I'm gonna add some background leaves in the same style as before. Now with this light peach color. For this one, I feel like a dark background would look really good. I actually chose this lighter colors on purpose just to try adding a dark background in the end. And I was in between dark blue or dark green and I ended up deciding on the dark green. When we add it on paper, you can't really tell it's green, but anyway, this part is a little more time consuming than I imagined at first. And it really requires some patience. Okay, especially if you're working with this type of brush tip, it gets a little tricky to paint each little edge and corner sometimes, and I kind of like made it harder for myself, I guess, because it created a lot of small spaces to paint. So again, make sure you have a good show or music in the background so you can really focus and not make any mistakes. At least this works for me, so I don't know, it might not work for you. Maybe you like the silence, you know? I honestly admire that. I admire people who can be in silence and do things. I, I don't know. I think my mind has been so busy that the silence just opens space for me to stress over things and I just really need to learn how to quiet my mind and stay with myself in silence again. It's hard, right? I guess it's just easier to just muffle the sound of my thoughts with a podcast, you know? <laughs> But anyway, do what works for you. I'm also leaving the satisfying parts to the end and contouring the spaces before I paint them, which I think is helping me to keep going and keep focused because it's making me excited to get to the coloring part. We're basically painting the white spaces. It took me one hour and a half to finish just this 
part. And if you look up close, there are a lot of imperfections, which are fine. You can leave it like this because the pattern effect masks the imperfections and we don't really pick up on it. But I want to stay a little longer with this artwork and I'm gonna use a Pigma brush ink pen in this color that's like a sepia. It's like a medium brown tone. And just to fix up some edges, some corners and create some separation between the leaves and petals and just adding some thin lines and some spots where I feel like it could have a more clear definition basically. I'm also using a white gel pen to create some spotlights and fix the stems a little bit. And this is our last floral pattern of today, guys. I hope you like it. I really enjoyed creating this. And even though this last one took me a lot longer to finish, I think it's my favorite one. I don't know. And this is it, everyone. Let me know in the comments which one was your favorite. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe so I can be here for you every week. And I will see you next time. Bye.